in the previous episode. All right, so we are on the road now, finally, on our way to Oklahoma. Okay, we found it. Hold on. Oh, no, this is it, Fort Supply here. Lake. Yeah. In the first episode, we discovered Fort Supply Lake, Oklahoma, where we found a damn big dam. We drove through Oklahoma City, just passing through, and found Chickasaw National Recreation Area, where we found one of the most beautiful campsites we've ever seen in our lives. Just look at this. Caught a few fish. There we go. It's not, not bad. And did a little exploring. Finally getting out, and we are exploring this place. So let's pick up where we left off in the last episode. Thanks for watching Journeys by Jay. And it looks like we have come full circle. Because there we are. Whew, okay. Now it's time to check the map and see where we're going next. I think we're going to go up to those freshwater springs. Okay. And that's another hike. So, ah, oh, that air conditioner feels good. Broke a little sweat, man. Ugh, fat boy got to lose some weight. Well, we're finding waterfalls all over the place here. Look at this nice little thing. Look at how clean this water is. I bet people like to swim here. I bet this is a hell of a fun swimming hole. Yeah, this would be a hell of a fun swimming hole. These waterfalls are just all over the place here in Oklahoma. And yes, they are amazing swimming holes, as we'll soon discover. Yeah, so these aren't exactly the biggest waterfalls you've ever seen in your life. But each one of them has so much tranquility packed into each one that you just can't help but absorb it all in and just be left feeling calm. All of this fresh water is pumped out of springs in the local area that we're going to be checking out a few of very soon. seems to be a little debate about where this little place, it's a set of falls called Little Niagara here. Uh, the map is about as clear as mud, but uh, we're just gonna follow signs instead of the map and see if it leads us there. So, should be this way, I think. Oh, oh, there's more over here. Little Niagara. It's a nice little swimming hole, man. Okay, it's at this point where I start to realize that maybe Oklahoma is kind of keeping a few secrets from the rest of the world. And the Falls up there. It's like a nice little area. How's the water? Yeah? yeah. This place is spectacular. What a great find. I want to swim here. That looks so much freaking fun. Yep, a favorite summer swimming hole. Probably since like the dawn of time. Yep, look at that. I'm telling you, that looks like a blast, but we just came unprepared. But we'll be back. We'll be back here someday and we will swim in that swimming hole. All right, we found it. Um, we're going up to Buffalo Springs, which is a freshwater. What was the name of the other one? I can't remember. I don't either. I guess we'll Antelope, find out. Antelope. Antelope Springs. There we go. Another trail, two in one day, guys. So two for one bonus. Okay, so we are here. We're gonna be walking all the way up here. Gotta remember to take that right, that left turn at Albuquerque, and come up to Antelope Springs and up around to Buffalo Springs, probably cut back right there, unless we see something out here that just absolutely looks wonderful, and then we'll start rolling our way back. But yeah, thank you 
Federal Park Service for finally putting up a map that makes sense. It's time to discover where all this water is coming from. And I got so excited because this pond over here to the right was supposed to be just full of box turtles. But I didn't see any box turtles. On to Antelope Springs. Let's check it out. There it is, just coming right out the ground. Water from the ground is just about as clean as you can get. I was tempted to take a drink, but eh, all that green stuff kind of dissuaded. And moving on up the trail, we cross this beautiful stone bridge, which really kind of details the kind of care that the National Park Service puts into its parks. Eventually, we discover Buffalo Springs, one of the more interesting springs I've ever seen. That's crazy, you can just see it bubbling up to the surface, all this water. This spring literally produces tens of thousands of gallons of water every day. And with the added architecture, it is probably one of the most beautiful springs I've ever seen in my life. Good job, Park Service. Well, it's time to head back now. To be honest, the, the spring heads were a little underwhelming. But that's okay, it's still neat. All that fresh water flowing down there by them falls we were just talking about all comes from these springs. So it's pumping out a lot of water every day. And, but no, the falls and especially that swimming hole. Oh my gosh, I'm still going on about that swimming hole. I gotta hit it someday. Someone help me out. What in tarnation is that? We were kind of expecting aliens to pop out. We did it. We did it. Hooray. You know, three miles of hiking's all right and all, but uh, I think now it's time to go into Sulphur and check out the local eats, because we're a little hungry. Yes, we are. So, let's get some food. It's quasi-local food. Um, we don't have these in Colorado. They're drums, dude. Drums. Oh my god. Chicken strips. Well, don't make fun of me too hard. Brahms, dude. We don't have those in Colorado. And that was pretty darn good food, man. It was cheap. Holy crap. Both of us ate like big food for like 15 bucks. I know, it wasn't a local eatery. We kind of went driving through the local eatery area and didn't see anything that really stood out. So we just dealt with what we had and I'm not complaining. Upon return to the site, I had another surprise. And of course, as luck would have it, I'm out there fishing again, trying to catch some crappie with a crappie rig, and I got catfish. So it, wouldn't you know it, caught a catfish. Look, look, this, this is what I caught him on. I don't care. Catfish is just as delicious as crappie to me. So once again, I am setting out to find some of those aquatic critters. Fish on here. I have no idea what it is yet. It's a crappie. No? What are you? It looks like some kind of striped bass or something. Thank you. Okay. Well, at least I'm catching fish. Ooh, I barely got him too. I have no idea what that is. After some quick research, uh, anyway. I was right. Go on back. That is a striped bass. Get your big brother. Oh, but alas, the big brother did not show up that night or any night thereafter. So we move on. And completely pooped out from all the day's activities, we settle in, build a campfire, and get ready to call it a night. Bring an end to the busiest day we've had so far on this trip. Tonight's one of those nights where you just kind of want to settle into a camp chair and look up at the stars. You gradually get tired and drift off into dreamland. Cheers. Good morning. Tuesday, April 27th. This will be the start of day four of our adventure. And not much really on the itinerary for today. Today is going to be just kind of a chill out day. Might try to take some, get some more fish. Uh, we might go for a walk around these woods later. We'll see. Another thing that's kind of on the docket for today is they say there's a 50% chance for severe thunderstorms today. That could keep us in too. So 
we'll just kind of see. Tuesday's breakfast is steak and eggs, basically. Took the leftover kebabs from night one, scrambled up some eggs in it, and ooh la la. Yeah, I'm starting to get tired, so I'm going to more traditional methods of fishing. Well, folks, I gave up on the artificial lures. Now, got me a bucket of live bait here. And I'm actually getting some action. I just caught another crappie. So, I didn't do this. I'm going to do this one the same way I did the last one. That's, I'm going to hook him through his tail here so he tries to swim away. Oh, 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 I know that hurts. And I'm just fishing it off a float. I just got one. Where is he at? There he is. What do we got? Come on over here, buddy. It's a crappie. I don't know if he's big enough. Well, maybe. There we go. It's a nice little black crappie. Two fish in the last hour, man. If I'd have known that was the secret all along. Minnows on a bobber. I'd have been doing that from day one. And it worked out splendidly because I caught enough fish to make a dish. All right, it's time to cook up the catch for the past couple days. This is the catfish. Cooking it up light and fluffy. And we're gonna have that fresh out of the lake catfish experience here in just a few minutes. Now the crappie's cooking. Catfish is ready, let me cool down for a sec. I wanna sample some of the fresh lake fishes. Check this out. Fresh fried fish. <laughs> Yep, and literally like a dog distracted by a squirrel. Oh, we got a squirrel. What? Mmm. That's so tasty. Southern fried catfish. Mm. It always tastes better when you catch it yourself. Mmm. All right. Catfish was pretty good. Now it's time to try a piece of crappie. Oh, it's extremely hot. Might want to wait a little bit on this. Okay. Oh, this tastes so much better. So you're not living unless you actually go off the beaten path, right? And that's exactly what we did here. Explored some forest area around the campsite that was quite spooky. No trails whatsoever. And we made a few astonishing discoveries along the way. You may want to watch where we step. I have no idea what kind of snake this is. Hey, poke it with a stick. I'm not gonna poke it. <laughs> so even after doing research, I still don't know what kind of snake this is. So Oklahoma, help me out. But we saw these beautiful flowers with butterflies all over them and that was calming. However, we're not stupid and wandering around an unmarked forest is just a recipe for disaster. We didn't want to end up a headline, so we just headed back to our campsite that it seems many others have taken notice of. I just think it's pretty freaking cool how many people have come driving or walking around this corner here they see our camper and they're like what is that that is so cool well guys we may be bugging out a day early on this trip starting tonight it's supposed to get all stormy and then uh then the world ends nothing nothing for wednesday oh there's wednesday <laughs> it's gonna be thunderstormy all day and all night so, it's not looking good. So I think it has been decided that we're gonna leave tomorrow a day early, just because the weather's supposed to be super crappy tomorrow. And we're gonna split the trip up again. We're gonna go back to Fort Supply, assuming that they have a campground available. But considering how this campground looks right now, it's a desert. There's nobody here, like except for us and like two other people as far as I can tell. All right, so last night here, Final thoughts about Buckhorn Campground. Well, first of all, very nice place. Very clean, uh, beautiful, quiet. We were here at the end of April going into May and it was, it was comfortable temperatures, a little cooler at night and a lot of wind, a lot of clouds. 
overall I would say absolutely a great place to come to and camp you know loop C site 59 we scored the lottery we've got the best freaking site in this whole campground and it's amazing and you can't beat it because it's got water it's got electricity it's right on the freaking lakeshore and it's not far from the bathhouse so you kind of got the best of all worlds right here and it's really inexpensive fishing's pretty good there's lots of great hiking trails you you've already seen them by this point in the video that we you know explored the buffalo pasture yeah, and all the, the springs trail was awesome. yeah that and we an awesome trail. yeah the buffalo trail was awesome a little spooky back there we could have met our creeper there for all we knew but uh, we never saw any never saw any buffalo oh sorry bison american bison they're not buffalo but um overall yeah if you get a chance to come to this place i highly recommend it now to get this you know sweet spot of a campsite that i did i booked this like eight months ago eight months ago buckhorn campground in chickasaw national recreation area is definitely a big thumbs up from us so we'll be back we'll definitely be back Weathermen don't lie in Oklahoma. It's a bit of a soggy mess out here. So we are in the process of packing up and breaking down. And uh, we're gonna get out of here and start heading, making our way back to Fort Supply. But we're gonna hit some place along the way that I've really been looking forward to on this trip. And that's gonna be a surprise, so stick around. All right, I just got my last shower in before hitting the road. Waiting on the wife. And it looks pretty dark, don't it? It is 9.15 in the morning, but man, those, it's ugly out here. And so we hit the road again, heading north, getting out of this rain, because the further north we go, the less rainy it gets. And thankfully, by the time we reach the destination I'm heading to right now, it's cleared up quite a bit. I see the Whataburger. Going into Whataburger. I know, some of you are like, whatever, what a burger. Dude, we ain't had what a burger since 2007. Mm. And we missed it, because we lived in Texas. And you don't have what a burgers in Colorado. All right, time to see if this is as good as I remember. Whataburger needs to come to Colorado. Yes. Well, we were not gonna drive by a Whataburger and not stop. Original plan was actually to go ahead and uh, stop on the way down, but we were still full from our lunch. But anyway, so now it's time to get back on the road. Gonna head through Oklahoma City here and start heading west. Yep, and now that I'm completely satisfied with my Whataburger experience and everything we've experienced up to this point, I think I'm ready to get on home, but there's still one more stop. But there's some places along the way we need to check out. We gotta go into the Cherokee Nation and check out this little gift store. I have a feeling we're gonna find some interesting items here. And the heritage of Native America seeps from every pore. Oh! All right. Had to stop for souvenirs. Got, you know me. I got, oh boy, they wrapped it up all nice and I'm gonna mess it all up. Sweet little Oklahoma shot glass. Pretty nice. And for eight bucks, that better be. <laughs> A sticker for the camper too. And these little refrigerator magnet. Oh. You know, I don't know why we keep going with the buffalo theme because we didn't been see all any. over Oklahoma <laughs> and we have not seen any. a single buffalo. We did anyway. on our way in. Bison. We saw some. Oh yeah, that's right. We did see them when we were first okay, arriving. We you know, when we didn't have a camera available, that's that's awesome. And just a few more miles north, we finally arrive once again back at Fort Supply Lake. 
for one more night of peace and tranquility before we make our journey home. And we're back. Time to do the whole setup thing again, all over again. Time to set up camp once again. We're gonna get real good at this real fast. Where I was a little bit intimidated about the setup process of this whole thing at first, at this point, we've got it down to a science. Just a simple setup for anybody, even grandma could do it, guys. So now, we settle in to begin recovery. It's a burger kind of day, isn't it? That water burger. Now we're gonna have one and even better burger. <laughs> I'm stupid. So you can't get nothing like that at Whataburger. It's even better. Better than Whataburger. Two burgers in one day. Well, I didn't have burgers. This is well, I had two burgers in one day. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I knew was going to happen on this trip was that the wife was going to come in and she was going to make it feel more like home. You know, to me it was just a camper and I'm a, I'm a dude, you know. I'd probably sleep on a mattress with a blanket over me, you know, using my towel as a pillow or whatever. But uh, she's really kind of turned this into something pretty cool. So I'm going to share with you real quick uh, some of the features of this little camper, which is turning out to be a perfect couples camper. It really is. Um, well, we'll start right out here as you're coming in. You know, we got, there's a little stereo system with uh, uh, Bluetooth and all that stuff in it. It sounds terrible. There's the thermostat. Of course, got your lights there. And she's got all decorated. Little counter space here. She's got a coffee maker. So, something that is a must is get a uh, little six prong outlet uh, surge protector. It's not necessary for the surge protector, it's just there's so few plugs in here that you know you just plug one in down there and poof. Now this was uh, a nice addition. This really helps a lot because the overhead lights in the camper, it just feels artificial, feels like you're in some kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It just, it's not warm and inviting, but you know, just this one little LED lamp makes all the difference. And leave it to the wife, she turned the whole bed area into, well, a bed. A very nice sleeping area that's comfy and warm and all that. Uh, down there we have our air conditioner and it's a uh, heat pump as well, works great. We finally got to use it this time around. A uh, couple dirty dishes up in there, but you know, got this little kind of kitchen space where you know you've got your water and there's a little stove under there that we have not used yet. Um, mostly because we worry about the stink in here, but I'm sure as time passes that'll go. A surprisingly large refrigerator. I'm I was actually impressed. I mean, it, it's tiny, don't get me wrong, but once we started putting stuff in it, we were like, huh, this actually holds more than we thought. Here's a little feature that we'll probably never use as a microwave. In fact, as you can see, we're storing towels in there right now. And, you know, here's the dining area. Table set up, and you know, it's got his and hers little areas for our clothing and so forth plus his and hers seeding. There's sesame seeds all over mine. I wonder why that could be. It's not like I was eating a hamburger or something. But, you know, nice windows and so forth. Good fan, big window space. I don't know, man. Like a couple months ago, I was already talking about, yeah, I think I need a bigger RV. No, I don't. No, not for a while. You know, if we start Doing this more often, like more full-time, well, not, not even full-time, but we'll say part-time RVing, semi-retired, kind of doing it a lot, yeah, maybe then. Be nice to have a bathroom, you know, but, you know, I'm still young enough that I can walk. Bathroom's right there, so whatever, guys. This is home while we're on the road, and it's awesome. Want to keep it awesome? Pro tip, get yourself a water pressure regulator, a surge protector for your RV, and just to keep the water clean, get yourself a water purifier as well. And you're gonna have a great time. So freaking barbecued and 
Yeah, we'll check out a little bit tomorrow. I don't know what else there is. Is there anything else in the area to see? Let's see. The whole face is going to be one big tumor. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> Feels good though. Let's see, what is there to see? Paper towels. <sighs> Port Supply Historic Site, Port Supply Lake. Port Supply Reservoir. That's what we got. Oh, okay, well, so we'll go to Port Supply Historic Site. See, best Sorry. things to do in Port Supply. And so we end the day with a plan for the next. We'll see you then. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, April 29th, day number seven since we left home. And uh, today's the day we go home. I think it's time. I'm burnt to a crisp, and it's going to be a hat all day type of day because uh, I look like a leper. Um, my lips are all swollen because they got burnt too, so. <laughs> Always bring sunscreen, kids. Jeez, of all the things to forget. But uh, it's time to start packing up. Well, we got, we're gonna head home, but uh, I feel like there's a place or two along the way that we wanna stop at and just kinda see. Anyways, last, last look at Fort Supply Lake Campground. It's beautiful here, peaceful. I think my only complaint about Oklahoma, and it's probably just because of the time of year, but um, is that the wind does not stop blowing. But uh, hey. Like I said, maybe that's just the time of the year. But I'm going to start packing this up and we're going to get out of here. So, remember that prison we showed you in episode one? Yeah, it's about to become part of the story. So fun times, we came to the Fort Supply historic site because we kept seeing the sign. And interestingly enough, we are being uh, friendly, escorted. friendly escorted out because this right over here is a, a prison. prison. Oklahoma Department of Corrections here. They were real friendly. They were like, are you looking for the lake? And I'm like, no, historic site. And they're like, it's by appointment only. Okay, so, we'll leave. <laughs> yeah, it's a prison here, so. I thought it was a little odd. I'm walking around. We're yeah. seeing guys in orange jumpsuits everywhere. Everywhere. Obviously, <laughs> not too concerning to me considering my career. But, um, yeah. I can imagine they were a little jumpy. Like, who the hell is this, this pulling in here with a trailer? So. I get it. I get it. Yeah, so Oklahoma may be putting a historic site on the same site as a prison is maybe not the best idea. However, it still created one of the fondest memories I have of this trip. So Oklahoma, hats off to you and your oil. God bless you. Back in Guymon now, and my forehead decided to explode on that trip from from Fort Supply to here. I just started itching and the next thing I know there's like snow coming down, dead skin <laughs> into my face. But uh, I know it's kind of gross, but phew. Wear sunscreen. Yes, kids wear sunscreen. <laughs> and just a few miles down the road, we're finally arriving back in the colorful state of Colorado. We're home, baby, we're home. After a quick stop in Springfield, we decide that we're going to take another route off the beaten path to a little known place that people just don't know about. You see, when you head west from Springfield, you'll find yourself in Pinion Canyon, a place that is just completely underrated by Colorado standards. And along the way, you'll find some history. Good place to stretch legs little bit north of Kim, Colorado here, taking that scenic route. And we've got interesting history here about this area. Dust Bowl from the 1930s. The Carrizo Auto Tour, whatever that is. Looks like a trip you can take. All of this was once undersea. Sharks on the plains, they found them. Yep, yep, they were here. Ugly buggers, too. What's this kid looking at? 
That was the Derpa Sharkle fin from the Mesozoic era. I don't know. No fire, because only you can prevent wildfires. I'm not even going to go through all this. Just pause if you want to see whatever's going on here. All right, back to the road. We're almost home. And here it is. Right here is where we start to dip into Pinion Canyon. One of the canyons that just nobody in Colorado really knows about. Completely rich with history, you can find anything from ancient petroglyphs to dinosaur tracks, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I said that right, dinosaur tracks. Perfectly preserved dinosaur footprints in mud from millions of years ago. But that's for another adventure. For now, how about we just soak in the beauty that is this underrated canyon in Southern Colorado that nobody goes to? Well, I'm betting that's gonna change someday in the future. But for now, we're so close to home that all we see is a few more corners and boom, we're back on the plains, ready to get home, rest up for our next adventure. We hope you'll be there for it. So hit subscribe, hit like, and share with anybody you think might be interested. Oh, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can get all of our content as it comes out. And for real-time notifications, follow us on Facebook as well as Instagram, and you'll be right there with us through all the journeys. Until the next time, cheers, guys, and I hope to find you somewhere out there on the road.